from Politico today, the former Freedom Caucus chairman, Jim Jordan, we have a full screen on this, said this is Obamacare by a different form. They're still keeping the taxes in place and Medicaid expansion, and they're starting a new entitlement. These tax credits are an entitlement, aren't they? No, they're not an entitlement. What they are is a reward for people to take care of themselves, for people to purchase health insurance. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to have a patient-centered health care system. What Obamacare did and failed at miserably was to force people for that Washington mentality of we know best what's, what's good for you and, and we're going to send it down from Washington to see. Instead, we want people to be in charge of their health care. We want it to be patient-centered. We want to remove the obstacles, the barriers between the patient and the doctor and the health professionals. Will, will this bring costs down? It will. I'm a big believer in the free market, and I believe that the free market will bring health care costs down. And that's what Obamacare did just the opposite of. Obamacare killed the free market. It is failing. We've got to try something. We feel like we have a plan here. We're very confident that this plan will work and bring about what our goal is, accessible, affordable, patient-centered health care. Of course, the only way to know what this is going to cost is a system which we've used in the United States for a long time. There's an office, as you know, sir, but for our viewers, called the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO. It's the CBO's job as a nonpartisan group to look at a bill that Congress is trying to pass, work through it, figure out what it's going to cost, and report back. You're pushing this through, and we'll vote on it in the two committees before the Congressional Budget Office scores it. So right now, we don't know what it will cost, and we do not know how many people will lose insurance, right? We do not know what the CBO is going. You're exactly right. We don't know what they're going to Why say. Not wait? But we, well, we because Obamacare is failing. Just this weekend, 16 counties in Tennessee, no insurance provider whatsoever. We cannot stand idly by and just watch the health care system in America, the greatest health care system in the world, totally implode. We've got to step in and do the responsible you thing. You can't and that's wait exactly one week for doing. the Congressional Budget Office Listen, to score this. If not, why not? Well, we can wait until the Congressional Budget Office scores it before we vote on it on the floor, and we're going to do that. But we can get this through the committee process because we're confident that this is going to bring about exactly what we told the citizens and promised the citizens, that we would bring them back to a patient-centered health care system. But people on your right say what you've done is added an entitlement. And there are lots of people, including four senators who today said they will not vote for this, three others who have expressed r doubt about it, and those are all Republicans. If you lose two Republicans, this cannot pass. So how do you keep them? Well, we understand the math of it. Look, Obamacare added 20 million people to the insurance rolls. 14 and a half million of those were able-bodied adults who were added on to Medicaid, a safety net program that was never intended for able-bodied adults. We've got to draw back that expansion. That is not what Medicaid was intended to be for, and that's not what we should be using it for. We've got to partner with the states, let the states run a more efficient and effective Medicaid system like we know they can. That's what we intend to do. There, there was a penalty under Obamacare for not having insurance. That was the way that they said we make this fair for everybody. You've eliminated that penalty under Obamacare, under Trump care, but you replaced it with a new thing. And that is if a family, for instance, has insurance, but times are tough, they got to make car payments, kid needs braces, whatever it is, and your insurance lapses for two months, then the insurance company can charge you 30% more than you were paying before. And the critics will say, instead of a mandate, you're putting the cost off on those whose insurance lapsed. Look, we all understand that insurance is not something that you just buy when you need it. It's something that you need to have and that you have continuously. There were people out there gaming the system. When they didn't need the insurance, they didn't pay for it. When they needed it, then all of a sudden they wanted it back and they wanted to be able to pay for it at the same price. Well, that's gaming the system. We have to be responsible, and I am confident in the American people that they will understand what it means to be responsible and to keep their insurance, even through the good times and the bad times. We, the Freedom Caucus is is about to have a news conference. They're, they're largely their questions are about money going out. Because though you say the talking points, the old talking points that have worked throughout campaign after campaign, you, you won a couple of houses, you won midterms on this, on this same thing. But that was at a time when you didn't have to do the replace part. And, and these Freedom Caucus members say, okay, but we're not going to keep giving the taxpayers money 
to people out there as an entitlement. New entitlements don't fly with them. What, what can you do to bring them in and unite people around this? Well, I think once that they recognize that this is all part of a plan, we have been clear and concise and united in our conference that we need to have a stable transition period. And that's what we're trying to do is to have a stable transition period. We're making sure that we don't pull the rug out from underneath anyone. We are bringing Medicaid and we're reining the Medicaid expansion back in exactly what they want us to do, what they propose to do. We are doing that through this plan. Yes, it's going to take a little while. This didn't happen overnight. It's not going to change overnight. Governors of a number of states have complained that tens of millions of people, well, 10 million people, I should say, 10 million people got added coverage because of Medicaid expansion. They're very concerned that those people won't be protected. We don't know how many people will lose insurance as a result of this bill. When will we know? Well, first of all, we, what will happen? No, These no, but, but when will we know? When will we know? Will we know before the bill is passed into law or after the bill is passed into law how many people will lose insurance and who they are? What we will know is what the CBO predicts will happen. And, and you know, the CBO is not always correct. What will happen is when we create a market-based health care system again, when we get people in charge of their health care, when we have competition in our health care, when we have the, the ability to go out and, and to access health care and affordable health care, then we'll know that we've got people who will be covered. Representative Buddy Carter, who's live with us uh, of the state of Georgia, sir, thank you.